How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Nice to meet you. Pleasure meeting you as well. Pleasure meeting you as well. I'm very excited to have you here. I have so many questions for you. And we have to thank Karina and Katrina Garcia for introducing us. Yes, yes. Yeah, they're great people. Super engaged. We love them to death. So. I love yeah. them too. I love them. Did yeah. you think they were twins or did you know they were Swiss sisters? No, I definitely knew they were sisters. Yeah. Are, are they twins? I don't they're know. Not they're, twins. No, they're, they're not twins. They're not twins. Yeah. yeah. But they look like twins, right? But yeah, I don't no, think they, they, they look very similar. But yeah, they're certainly sisters. That's for sure. They're they don't, they are. So uh, <laughs> the first thing I have to ask you is why does it say that you hate money on ah. your Instagram? No, no. It's a... Um, it's just an old uh, saying is one of the previous businesses I was in, actually, well, I still own it, but one of the, we were discussing a uh, contentious LLC topic that was about money. And um, they asked my opinion on it. And uh, one of the other partners said, oh, it does, Falco hates money. So <laughs> this, because, which is tongue in cheek, of course. And it's just because, um, you know, what I value, I try to value, uh, um, you know, creating the best experience and the greatest things. And obviously, bottom line is incredibly important if you want to stay open, especially in times like this. But um, certainly uh, is not my focus. That's for sure. Wow. Well, that I, I would tell you that is unique. And I, I'm going to yeah. definitely dive into that a little bit more. So when yeah. you tell our audience, I, I said, I can't say this three times fast. OK, tell us about the Strange Beast Brew Pub and yeah. LinkedIn's beard. So two businesses, yeah, sure. right? two, two locations. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, it all started in 2016. You know, I, I um, come, I'm, I'm a local guy down here in Miami, Florida, and um, I, uh, I joined the military, got out of the military, ended up uh, working at, um, at, a, at a government defense job down here in Miami, and just was unfulfilled. And um, I, I was really intrigued. I kind of always wanted to open a bar. You know, my parents, uh, my my dad's a serial entrepreneur, and and my um, my mom used to be a, a, a as she calls it a barmaid, and um, and they worked at restaurants and whatnot, and it was just always intriguing to me. So I figured, hey, there's no better time than now. So in 2016, we we uh, myself and five um, business partners, just normal folks, kind of threw our money together, and and we opened up Lincoln's Beard Brewing, um, which is. Uh, it is the intent was for it to be about a 1200 square foot um, beer bar, maybe turning into a, a brew pub someday. And it turned out to be much, much bigger than that. And just, it kind of snowballed, which, which is a lesson, although, although thankfully it worked out, it's certainly a lesson learned um, for, for any new entrepreneur, which I was at the time and um, which is don't bite off more than you can choose. So, but um, after about four years of chewing, um, it's still cooking along, still doing well. Um, uh, just two two of the partners remain myself and um, a gentleman named Todd Maxwell with with uh, Karina Katrina know very well, um, and uh, we ended up uh, taking that that energy and we we opened Strange Beasts, which is much smaller, kind of what we originally had in mind. It's about um, it's about twelve hundred square feet and um, well, I'm sorry, actually about fourteen hundred square feet uh, feet of, of usable um, guest area and and kitchen area, and um, we introduced pizza. Before we were just brewers, so now we brew and we uh, we cook pies and and we've been doing really really well out there and we're very lucky to have such a great great um, supporting cast, both from landlord to um, to customers really. So where is Lincoln's Beard and where is Strange Beast? Yeah, sure. So Lincoln's Beard is right in the center of the city here. It's on Palmetto Expressway. It's a major thoroughfare there and Bird Road. So. Two of the busiest uh, roads there in, in South, here in South Florida. And then, um, but it's centered kind of right in, in the middle of multiple neighborhoods, um, Westchester, Coral Gables. And that's kind of our shtick. You know, we, we really like to put um, our spots in the middle of neighborhoods. It's, um, it's just more comforting to me. It feels good. There's obviously, you know, beneficial uh, uh, business um, impacts to that as well, but uh, and then Strange Beast, we moved it way out west, which is on a road called Sunset and 152nd Avenue, um, which is, you know, 152 avenues from uh, downtown. And so it's way out west. And um, it's it's right in the middle of a place called Kendall, which is, it seems like Kendall is where everyone's from, if that makes sense. Oh, I'm from Kendall, yeah. 
it's just it's huge huge um popul uh, populated area huge residential area and um it's doing great and it's a small spot so it doesn't take much to run so it's really nice <laughs> so you're you're gonna you're gonna laugh are you ready sure i'm from milwaukee wisconsin yeah and i grew up living above our tavern oh really in, in a neighborhood oh nice and from the age of seven you won't know what this is because we live in florida but from the age of seven my chore every day was to clean the bottle chute bottle chute yeah so, what is that this, yeah so the bottle chute you had <laughs> basements so you had your bar and my parents were bartenders right my mom had a little kitchen in the back that she made burgers. We had a pool table, so we had pool leagues and bowling leagues. But when you had a bar in Wisconsin, you had a basement. So mm -hmm. when to recycle the beer bottles, that you would put them down a chute. So you'd put them down the chute and they're like, doon, 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 doon. and I'd go in the basement and there would be seven layers. And I was, my job at seven was to take soda bottles and beer bottles, 24 ounce and 16 ounce, and I had empty cases and I had to take them out of the bottle chute and put them in the recycling cases and then carry them to where we had a hatch door where the beer distributors would come and Recycle. bring us new beer and soda and take away the recycling. Fantastic. And I got five cents a bottle. Oh, that's, but, a, that's not too bad at all. But I'd get cut. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So the, yeah. that was the, uh, the, 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 the danger of the job. Yeah. I'd like have band-aids. I think I'd go to my Catholic school and the nun would go, why do you have band-aids all over your hands? Yeah. No comment. No comment. But, right. But we, um, until we moved to Florida in 1975, when I was 15, mm -hmm. my grandparents were in the bar business. We had a little bar. It was like Cheers. It was on the corner in a neighborhood. And we had, my parents took over my grandparents and then we did, and then we moved to a, a different neighborhood and they had another one. So from zero to 14 years, I lived on top of a bar. Oh, yes. Well, you learn a lot. You know? <laughs> so definitely entrepreneur family, you know, because, yes. you know, you, my parents were up. My dad was cleaning that bar at seven in the morning. Take me to school, go clean the bar. My mom would be on the, you know, she'd be doing the books. They would open at around 1130 and then, you know, they'd have bartenders that would relieve them for dinner, but they closed at two in the morning. It was a terrible, yes. terrible business, but yes. it was yeah. our business and that's how I grew up. So how, I had no idea about that. Yeah. Your parents were in the bar. Yeah. Barmaids yeah. and bartenders. That's what we're, yeah. we're, we have a lot in common. Yes. Yes. No, absolutely. Well, good. Well, then you, you certainly understand the grind, you know, the, um, and that's amazing. Luckily, you know, I have such an amazing support staff now that um, I get help with a lot of the stuff that your parents were probably doing on their own. Um, so hats off to them for sure. Yeah. So that is awesome. So, um, and you, you, you wanted to do it because of your parents. Um, like, like how long had you been thinking you wanted to open something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I was 36 when I opened it. Um, so probably, you know, all of my adult drinking life for sure. You know, I, I um, the military took me around the world a little bit um, to some fun places, some not so fun places. But um, what I did do is I was exposed to a tremendous amount of bars, bars, and restaurants. And <laughs> so I had all this, you know, pent up um, creative uh, uh, energy that I was able to to uh, translate into, I think, some pretty cool places, you know, so um, with the help, of course, my folks, but, um, yeah, I mean, probably 15, 20 years, you know, um, I, I, um, my, by the time I grew, uh, by the time I got old enough to understand what my parents were doing, my dad was in the, the aviation business. He was, um, he would overhaul and sell aviation parts and had a business doing that. And my mother was a waitress at Denny's. So, and she did that until I was probably 14 or so. So, um, I spent a lot of time in Denny's uh, e eating Grand Slams and and all that. Ha, but, uh, well, thank you for your service to the military. Oh, oh. And and thank I would tell you, you don't look 36, so good for you. I'm 39, so I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> you don't. The, the, the toll of being an entrepreneur is not wearing on your face. Good, good. Well, that's good. Thank you. <laughs>
Speaking about being an entrepreneur, when you were a kid, did you do any entrepreneurial things? Yeah, you know, I, I um, I, I've always been been in. Uh, how can I put this? I've always I've always appreciated change and doing different things and whatnot. But you know, I didn't uh, you know do the traditional lemonade stand, as far as I know. Um, you know, the kids that were you know selling candy in school, so, you know, without the teachers, I was kind of never that guy. Um, so yeah, I, I don't I don't know, but then again, being surrounded by um, my dad, who just you know is was the king of just taking, you know, making the best out of any opportunity, um, and my my mom and her incredible work ethic too, you know, is um, it was really inspiring. It it, it almost it, it almost uh, entrepreneurial, you know, being an entrepreneur it was in your blood was really an option. Yeah, I was kind of in the blood a little bit. You know, it's yeah. so funny. I always people always say, you know when I get interviewed sometimes, tell us about your parents. And it's so funny, we have, we have such similar paths. My mom's work ethic was next to none. And my dad was the dreamer. My dad yeah. never saw an opportunity that he didn't want to take advantage yeah. of. And, my, and I, thank God I got the best, I think a little bit of the best of yeah. both worlds. No, no, I tell, I tell my wife that all the time. I'm like, you know, um, thank God I didn't get the bad parts up. You know, I got the good <laughs> Exactly. I respect our parents. I love them to death. But so um, the first business, um, Lincoln's Beard, no food. No food. No food. Well, um, you know, we ended up at first we're like, I oh, will just bring in food trucks, but that's way easier said than done. Um, eventually, we built a big, essentially a kitchen in the back, and we've been um, contracting that out. Um, so that's um, that's been going great. You know, we've had some really amazing uh, local partners that have come in, some established partners. So we, we can, you talk, can you talk about that? So you basically sub out the kitchen. Is it yeah. one, is it, do you rotate it like a ghost kitchen or is it someone just uh, like one person that's hmm. done it for a long time? It's, um, it's a little bit of a, company. we certainly rotate it, but it's, it's on, it's on a large basis. We had the, the last gentleman that was in there was named a gentleman named John from the restaurant called Educos, which he, it's his second spot. Um, he was great. He was in there for just a few months. Um, we had tacos and tattoos, which is a very popular restaurant down here. They were in there for a year. Um, and then we had a couple other purveyors in there for anywhere from four to six months. So it's a, it's a decent, decent, um, it's a decent amount of time, depending um, depending on, on what their outlook outlook looks like and, and, and how compatible they are. But uh, yeah, just a standard sub, sublet agreement. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's I can't wait to come down and see this operation. That's, that's so interesting to me. So then, why? So what made you guys think? Okay, the next one we want to definitely add food. And how did you come up with pizza? Yeah, you know, I feel we were ready for it. Um, at Lincoln's Beard, you know, we always wanted to be able to do the food, but um, anyone that's, you know, even anyone that's not around the restaurant industry understands that there are so many moving parts and the difficulty of running it and maintaining it and making margins is, is really hard. So at that point, frankly, we didn't even know how to run a bar. So we wanted to focus on that and maybe in the future integrate food. But by the time Strange Beast came around, we were very, very comfortable in running a bar. And we uh, introduced what I still believe to be probably the simplest food concept you know pizza is is um requires very little equipment requires no hood um almost all of your ingredients are either cheese or cured meats um which keep very well and you have very little loss um Mark. so it, it's it's a really from this perspective pizza makes all sense of the world um it's also kind of uh recession proof and now we kind of know pandemic proof but um so yeah. are you are you open in your two businesses or you're or you're not how what's going on now yeah we're so we're open to the full extent that the law, law allows so um at both spots we're doing takeout and um delivery as well at uh at strange beast we're doing delivery but um yeah that's it that's it and the yeah. pizza business is thriving because i'm hearing the pizza in my so i own six shopping centers and i have pizza Mm -hmm. And I have Domino's and then I have another Italian and I mean, they're booming the pizza business. Yeah. We are selling probably, you know, we were never really a big takeout. We were never a delivery spot. We were never a big takeout spot. So I think that kind of hurt the transition. Um, so it's just something I'd certainly learned. I really want to lean heavier on that, you know, just in case other impacts come on, whether it be a hurricane or whatnot, but we're selling close to as many people. We're probably selling about, 80, 80 to 85% of the, the quantity of pizzas we normally sell. 
Um, the big major impact to our revenues is, of course, on on-site consumption of beer. You know, um, that just is, is 100% non-existent right now. And we're selling some to go, but it's way, way, way down. So um, right now, you know, we're just treading water, you know, waiting yeah. for it to go away. Yeah. Hopefully soon, right? Hopefully yeah. soon. Yes, hopefully soon. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, what is your, do you have a, is there a best item as far as beer that in, in either or both locations? Mm. I think um, the best beer, I, I would have to say probably uh, our IPA. So our house IPA, we call P. Swayze, which is absolutely named after Patrick Swayze, um, which was kind of, my mom was, my, my mama loved like four men in this world. Um, my father, me, Patrick Swayze, and George Michael, I think, <laughs> growing up. Um, so I was exposed to a lot of uh, Patrick's, uh, Patrick Swayze films. You know, I grew up watching yeah, everything from Dirty Dancing to uh, Roadhouse. So, um, and I just always found him an intriguing guy. So when I named my PA, um, I don't know what I was thinking that day, but it just felt right. So I called it P. Swayze. And by the time I could change it, too many people knew what it was. So. Is your mom still? Is your mom still with us? Yes, she is. Yes, Does she, she love is. that? Yes. Yeah. No. She she thinks it's hilarious. She's not a beer drinker, but she loves it. Um, yeah. So it's nostalgia is just. I mean, nostalgia is just such a powerful force with anyone. Um, so we try to leverage that, you know, genuinely. But we leverage that. How, so um, tell for the people in the audience, uh, even me, what does IPA stand for? Sure. No problem. Yeah. So IPA is just a beer style, um, just like a Guinness is a stout and a, um, say a Modelo is a Mexican lager. IPA stands for India Pale Ale, um, wow. which, yeah, which is just, it's a, it's a bitter beer. It has a little bit more hops in it. Nowadays, we're, we're making them less and less bitter and more and more fruit forward just because we've learned there's so many breweries. There's over 8,000 breweries in the country. And um, almost all of us are pretty open with our techniques and we tend to publish articles and whatnot and in journals and books. So we learned so much uh, on how we can use uh, the hop and, and whatnot, where we could reduce the bitterness and still bring out those delicious, fruity kind of flavor characteristics. So that's what IPA is. And Patrick Swayze tastes like apricots and peach, and it's really, really nice. Ooh, yeah. I, can't, I love beer. So I'm definitely yeah. coming. I, and I like, you know, sometimes I'll have the beers that have like the grapefruit taste in them. Like, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. There's been, well, Wisconsin's got some got some great beer up there. So, oh yeah, I'm uh, a beer girl, right? I'm a yeah, beer girl. Yeah. Um, how how big is uh, Lincoln's? You said it you, it was yeah. bigger than you planned. Sure, yeah. So the Lincoln's footprint's 3,100 square foot. So wow. um, of least area, it's about 4,200. We have a small mezzanine, um, and then we have a huge outdoor area that we kind of share with our neighbors. Um, so total square footage, we're probably looking at about 8,000. Um, wow. it, yeah, it's huge. And I'd say guests have access to probably about 4,500 of that. 5, wow. of you that. said you're by Bird in the Palmetto. Are you by the park? Or are you in that big, that big power yeah. center? Or are you freestanding? We, we, we are freestanding. We're right. So, so if, uh, if I'm standing on the park, I just jump across the Palmetto Expressway. I'm, I'm right there. I'm right are behind you, the eye. On the, on the east side of the Palmetto or the west right. side of the East yeah, side, okay. the east side, yeah, southeast, uh, southeast of the Bird and Palmetto gotcha. in, um, intersection. All right, I'm coming. I'm coming to see you guys. Um, so, um, when you do, do you plan on opening more, or you're good with two? Um, well, both. <laughs> I'm good with two, but uh, we are going to open some more. Um, no, and I'm, and I'm happy to have more too. You know, I uh, I do love one of my favorite things to do is to employ people i think not, not to be cliche but I, I love giving people the the uh, you know the opportunity to to grow and to have be empowered and and so i just love that um so we plan on opening a, a few more we have one in palmetto bay down on us 1 and 174th street down in palmetto bay and that one we should we'll probably be opening sometime in july maybe august um so uh, we got that going, and then we, we're working a couple of others that are, you know, a little further out. We're just in planning stage now. You need to come up to Broward. Where, where about, where about um, is home for you? So I live in Davie. Okay, I own. I, I own three shopping centers in Davie. 
I own two in Plantation and one in Sunrise. Oh, fantastic. Yes, I love all of those areas. My mother lives in Cooper City, actually, right now. Um, and my business partner lives in West Pembroke Pines, which is actually where I used to live for a while. So we love the Pembroke Pines area. I love Sunrise. I've met a lot of the folks from the city out there. I have a friend that works in the, in the, uh, in the city out there. And I'd love to get up there, to be honest. Yeah. Awesome. My, my so, sister lives in Davie, so most of my family is in Broward, actually. Actually, all of it, just about. How many breweries, or, or do you call yourself a brew pub? What, what is the classification of what you sure. do? Yeah, a, a, in the state of Florida, historically, a brew pub is a brewery that serves food. But in the state of Florida, we, we refer to a brewery uh, versus brew pub. A brew pub is someone that produces beer and consumes it on site only, um, whereas a brewery also sends out to some restaurants and whatnot. They tend to have a larger production. So at Lincoln's, we are certainly a brewery at Lincoln's, um, but Strange Beast out, out west um, is, is definitely a brew pub. Yeah, everything's consumed on site there. We actually do some trans, the, the Florida law allows us to transfer um, some beer from Lincoln's over to Strange Beast, which relieves us a bit of production. Did, um, so on a side note, my dad worked for a brewery in Milwaukee. Brewery. Oh. <laughs> Schlitz Brewery. Oh, I know Schlitz. Yeah. Yeah. They've been around for many years. Yeah. Um, how many breweries or brew pubs are in Dade County? Do you know? Oh, it's, it's not many, to be what? honest. Are we it, probably, it, yeah. it's not, not many. Not, Even in Broward, not no. many, right? No, it's really, really not many. Just to give you an idea, you know, we opened 2016. We were the seventh um, in Miami-Dade, which is a you know, city or county of, what, four million, maybe? Right. Um, now, if I... Without counting, I'd probably say there's about 15. Yeah. You know, 13, I know, 15. I do consulting for shopping centers that are looking to fill vacancies around the country. Sure. And uh, I was helping a firm in Charlotte. And they said, whatever you do, we don't want any more breweries or no more brew pubs. So there must be a lot in Charlotte because yeah, probably. I've never heard that before. I'm like, wow, I guess there must be too many here. Yeah, you yeah, know, there probably are. Um, yeah, it's, it's also brew pubs and here's the, the challenge with brew pubs that we always face. And I'm not, this may or may not be what, the, what they uh, have there is we have, there's an industrial aspect to what we do. Um, and it's clean, you know, it's not like we're, you know, refining crude oil here, but, um, <laughs> we, when we brew, we have uh, spent grain, which ultimately gets transferred to farmers, but that takes 24, 48 hours. We, a brewing process alone produces a lot of steam and a lot of heat and, and smells, but the smells smells like fresh bread, but you know, some people don't like any smells. So there are some industrial aspects to even a brew pub on a small scale that may not be conducive to um, commercial shopping centers. Um, so yeah, that, that could be another impact, but no, uh, up in the, the Carolinas and especially up in the Northeast, they have a tremendous amount, tremendous amount of breweries and brew pubs. Yeah. So in the, the first location, you're freestanding. The second one, you're in a you're in our friend's game property yep. shopping center. Correct. Right. Yep. And the third one is that going to be in a shopping center or freestanding? It is in a shopping center, very similar to to um, the one where I'm with uh, with Games, a strange beast, um, where it's it's small. Um, at game properties, we you know we have a tire shop, an ice cream shop, a barber shop, and us. That's it. Um, and um, so in Palmetto, it's going to be a uh, jujitsu spot, a dry cleaners, an ice cream shop, and us. So it's uh, ice cream and beer must be a good yeah, yeah. right? What? What? Tell us how you came up with the names. Sure. Yeah. So Lincoln's Beard was the name of my fantasy football team. That's the short answer. So, but why was it the name of my? And, and we couldn't call the name, and I threw it out there, and we held on to it, and next thing you know, it's our name. But it became the name of my fantasy football team because the story of how one, I'm just an incredible fan of Abraham Lincoln. I just, I, you know, he's just an amazing man, an amazing president. And um, there's a really interesting story for his beard, which is that there was an 11 year old girl named Grace Bettel back when um, Abraham Lincoln was running for president. And she, uh, her father was, um, was a fan of Abraham Lincoln's, went to one of his rallies and he, he came home with a pamphlet, with a, which I imagine his face was drawn on. He had no beard, and Lincoln wasn't the best looking, but the best looking guy. And um, he had a bit, certainly a bit of a weak, weak chin. So she wrote him a letter, and she wrote him a letter saying, "Mr. Lincoln, you should grow your beard out because you will look 
more, you know, stronger and, and tougher and better looking. And women who couldn't even vote at the time would tell their husbands to vote for you. Th th this was Grace Bettle's logic. And he wrote 11 her years old, a brilliant 11 year old young lady. I know, just how brazen and confident. And, 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 he, and for what it's worth, he, he grew the beard out and went on, of course, as we all know, when, when, you know, win the presidency and, and do some of, if not the most amazing things in American history. And um, I like to think that, uh, you know, like the butterfly effect, a little 11 year old writing a letter changed the course of history. And I always thought that was, especially an 11 year old who, who, uh, was an 11-year-old woman who, you know, female, you know, and... and Amazing. And yeah, it was, just, it was just crazy. So I just thought it was such an inspiring story. And... and um, so why didn't you call Strange Beast Lincoln Beard too? Yeah. Um, that's, a, you know, that's something we struggled with, right? Do you, you, you want to carry that brand over? So the reason, a couple reasons. The main reason is that I, was in, I had this inspiration for this uh, Japanese, uh, like, kaiju, which is Godzilla one night, not... Um, this theme, and I, I wanted to, to reflect that in the space. Um, and uh, I also, I, I really enjoy the model that a lot of chefs are doing nowadays, where they'll open different concepts under different names, but under the same hospitality group. It was just really intriguing to me. It, it allows you to kind of flex your, you know, creative muscle in, in, in ways that you wouldn't if you were, if you kind of had this, uh, for lack of better words, like this franchise or chain concept so we went with it and it's been good you know and, and there are certain crossovers as far as some of our artwork our merchandise um so we ended up going with strange beast which strange beast is a much more simple explanation um the japanese have the word kaiju which is the genre of godzilla and king kong and whatnot and the english translation for kaiju is strange beast and that's it <laughs> got it got it well yeah. what uh that is i love i very very interesting very interesting thank you um are you, have you been approached to franchise? You know, we've received a couple emails here and there, um, which we, you know, we haven't really looked into at all, to be honest. Um, we're, I think we're still a little young, both in business and in process and operations. Um, although that's getting better and better by the day uh, of great, team, great, great team. Um, and it's certainly, you know, when it's all said and done, you always have to have an exit strategy. Um, and, uh, you know, franchising would not be the worst one. That's for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So um, I have a question. Sure. It has to do with my hat. Yes. I was watching your other video, the canvassing queen. I saw that. So do you know what the word canvassing means? In, so there's a lot of people on this call. I see a lot of beer people on this call, right? <laughs> so that's awesome. But there's also um, a lot of my peeps, my leasing peeps on mm -hmm. the call, like Katrina and Karina. So sure. um, do you know what canvassing means? Uh, the only, as far as I know, it just means reaching out directly to people. Basically. That, that, that's correct. So my question to you is, because I teach this around the country, sure. if you were in um, Lincoln's Beard or Strange Beast, uh, you know, 930 on a morning, you're not open yet, it's not the peak time, like Saturday at you know five or whatever your peak time is, mm -hmm. and a leasing agent walks in with a flyer and says, you know, hi, I own shopping centers in Broward County. Would love to have this concept. Can I drop off a flyer? Ooh. How would you take that? Uh, I would love it. I would love it. You know, I, I'm I'm a huge huge fan of you know confidence, and I'm a huge fan of just going out and grabbing what you want, you know, respectfully, and. I, you know, I do have um, folks do that quite a bit and give me a call. And, and I always take every single one, even if they call, even if, it, even if the first line is, hey, you know, we have a spot in place X and place X is a place that I just know I would never put a brewery in. I always talk to them. I always entertain it. Um, and I always talk it through, you know, and, and um, I, I, I absolutely love when people do that. Um, yeah. And, and Furthermore, I mean, canvassing it in, in terms of if you're looking for a job, even, you know, go visit, go knock on their door. I, I, uh, I think that that translates into any industry and it's really great. Luckily in my, you know, my personality, I'm a very outgoing guy, but um, I've worked uh, uh, jobs, you know, really sales jobs where I've had to canvas a little and I just stink at it. So <laughs> I'll, stick, oh, wow. I'll stick to the beer, but um, 
I've always, I think that is the way to do it. That's the way to do anything, you know, just go out and do it. So yeah, not don't yeah, be afraid, that. right? Don't be absolutely. Afraid. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. And furthermore, um, you know, I, uh, that's, how, you know, we, we have a couple future concepts that were born from that, you know, and um, uh, it was great. I mean, the, luckily, Karina's spot that we moved in out west um, was kind of my, kind of where I grew up out there in West Kendall. And I just love that little spot. And um, so uh, Karina didn't, didn't need to reach out directly to me, but certainly uh, we welcome that. Absolutely. That's fact. I'm so happy to hear that. I um, sure. I teach that, and a lot of leasing agents say, "No, the business owners don't like to be interrupted." So what I'm doing, yeah. so, I, so I have an ulterior motive with all these these interviews, John. I definitely want to interview the small businesses. I want to promote the small businesses. But when this is all said and done, and we're back open and we're all busy, I'm going to clip all of the pieces of that part of all of the interviews where all of you have said yes. We, you know, as long as it's not our peak time, we would absolutely be yeah. able to, and I'm going to send it to all my students so that they say, see, right. Yeah. If, uh, okay. if you're, uh, if you're targeting a bar or restaurant, I would drop that off Tuesday at about noon. I think Tuesday that's, at that's, noon. Yeah. Um, Monday, yeah. The Friday or Saturday, I have received a couple of phone calls like that on Friday, Friday or Saturday. And honestly, I don't even remember how, how I handle them. Just, you want to get off the phone as quick as possible. Even if it's, even if, if it was my mother, I would do the same thing, you know? Right. Well, that um, yeah, they need to be smart and they need to be sensitive for sure. Exactly. But but you know, it it is like anything. You know, if you're really really busy and something falls to your desk, you, you don't really have time to take it serious. But having a professionally done packet, um, or you know, just having a, a quick elevator pitch and hitting at a time where the individual's not overwhelmed. You know, Mondays are always tough because it's kind of our catch up day. Right. Um, so Tuesdays, you know, midday, you're generally in a, in a good, in a good mood as, as a, a, you know, just talking bar restaurant owner. And, um, you know, it, it's a perfect time to come in and just kind of drop it off and be respectful. And I, and I always, I, you know, I, I think a lot of folks that do what I do, they get a little chip on their shoulder with, I, which I really don't like. And they, they stiff arm, um, folks, whether, whether it's, you know, property folks like, like y'all or, or whether it's sales folks. And I, I just don't think that's, the right way to handle things. I think that's rude. So I always give everyone the time of day um, as much as I can. And if I can, I just, I'm open and honest and say I don't, but there's only one way to do it, to be honest, which is just hit them up directly. I mean, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's really the way to do it. We've yep. also started about two or three years ago, what we've started doing, which is uh, better leverage is we reach out on Facebook. If, if, the, yep. if the owner has a Facebook page, I'll DM you. Yep. And then that way you can look at it when it's good time for you and just say, Hey, Hey John, I own shopping centers in Broward. Are, you know, are you planning on expanding up here anytime soon? And then when, you know, usually I get answers at two in the morning. Yeah. That's right? up till 4am last night. That's why I'm up. I intended to be at my shop so we could see everything, but um, I was up till 4am doing Excel work. So uh, I didn't get up till like nine thirty. So no problem. We're just happy you're here. We're happy. you're yeah, here. Happy to be here. Okay, so we have a few more questions as we wrap up. So sure. what is the number one thing, I think you kind of addressed this earlier, but the number one new thing that you as a business owner uh, have learned from COVID? Yeah, um, you know, flexibility by far. It's um, the only thing that has kept us going, absolutely. You know, unfortunately, a lot of my friends and the bar and restaurant folks have shut their doors just because it's just frankly not worth it to them. And it's, and it's just... And, and the reason most of them do that is so their employees have the ability to claim unemployment. Um, luckily, we have been um, able to maintain our full staff. We haven't let anyone go, and uh, we're able to pay them um, a percentage of what they usually make. And um, but we've only been able to do that because we stayed flexible. You know, we are putting beer in mason jars to go. We are driving to whatever restaurant supply we need to get extra boxes. We are working with local partners to um, introduce exciting new pizzas and exciting new collaboration beers just to keep folks engaged. Um, and the other thing is in a time where everyone else is spending less on social media ads in a time where everyone else is, you know, kind of, you know, have a lack of motivation to post on social media and, and engage your customer. But it's also the same time that everyone's sitting at home, or a lot of people are sitting at home on social media. So 
I think it's a beautiful time. Matter of fact, now, you know, if, you, if there's a way to sensitively canvas now, um, just to plant a seed, you know, even if you preface it with when this is all said and done, now's a great time. Now's a great time. It really is. Yep. I've been saying I've been saying that and I, I've doubled down. I've done way more social media postings. I've done 17 free webinars. I'm just wow. doubling down because, wow. yep. you know, I do think people are starting to get kind of the webinar fatigue. Yeah, so, sure. But but that's OK. You know, we're all just very anxious. You know, we all thought. I think we all thought Wednesday afternoon we were going to hear some good news. And then we were all kind of uh, saddened. But, yeah. you know, we have hope, right? We have hope. Um, Absolutely. OK. So my last question is, except for Lincoln's beard mm -hmm. <clears throat> and Strange Beast, yeah. the minute we are let out of our house, what business are you going to run and spend money at? Oh. I think it will be, it will most certainly be Flanagan's. <laughs> oh. know, yeah, it would, I will, I'm going to go to Flanagan's. I'm going to get some rib rolls and I'm going to get some ribs and I'm going to have some cheap beer. <laughs> and, uh, so, do you know I, Jimmy Flanagan? No, no, I've never met him. So I was at a wedding with him the night, the week before this hit. Oh, and cool. I've, he's been my tenant before. I'm going to connect you guys. I'm going to send him this clip. He's going to love that you said that. Yeah, I mean, Flanagan's has, I look at Flanagan's more than I look at my competitors as to how they do it. Um, there are a lot of places like Flanagan's. We all know that. There's a lot of sports bars, but there is just something about Flanagan's that um, it just... It's hell. It's just Flanagan's. <laughs> exactly. So I, yeah. I want to let you go, but I, I did have sure. a note that I wanted us to remind. So you had a fantasy football team, so you're obviously a football fan. I am. Yeah. I'm a huge football fan. All right. So my question is, do you like college or NFL better? Certainly NFL. Certainly okay. NFL. What's your team? I'm a Dolphins guy. Unfortunately. So are you happy about Tua? <laughs> I am. I am. I think. Um, I mean, I, I, I spent a lot of time sitting down reading about that injury. And yes, it's incredibly risky, but he just seems like a really, really talented young guy. And um, I think it's yeah. worth it. If it doesn't work out, yeah, if it doesn't work out and, and he's not healthy enough to continue, then so be it. But you got, you know, you got to shoot your shot, right? For sure, for yeah. sure. And when do you think football will start again? Oh, geez. I don't know. With, with, um, with folks in the stands, who knows? I, I mean, they'll probably play some weird, awkward, no, you know, no folks in the stands football, you know, maybe sometime in November or so, but it could be the new year before yeah. we're all in stadiums. Again. I, 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 we're, I'm at Seminole, so we're big college fans. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very concerned about if we don't have college football, just, you know, that the money that that brings to the universities. Uh, I'm very concerned. I have a tenant yeah. called Canesware, which it's oh. all, so I'm concerned for them. Yeah. My son is a Rams fan, LA oh. Rams. Yeah. And, you know, the mayor announced three weeks ago, no sports until 21. Wow. No sports. So, you know, wow. so even if NFL happens, I guess the Rams are going to play in all away games. It's bizarre yeah. what's going on, right? Bizarre. Yeah. I mean, there was talks about, you know, Major League Baseball doing, having everyone live. Oops, excuse me. There's talk. You still there? Got, got me? I'm here. Okay. I'm, cool. here. I'm Sorry, here. I lost you on my phone there for a second. Yeah, there, there were talks about Major League Baseball about them all staying in the same city in Arizona, I think, or Nevada, and playing at the same stadium with no fans. It's just odd. Weird. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Well, John, you have been a pleasure. As, and as have you. Thank you, Beth. I, I cannot wait to come to both Lincoln's Beard. I want to go to Lincoln's Beard because I want to see that kitchen. Will you let me come yeah. in the back? I got to check that out. Yeah, of course. And then, interesting. Interesting. and then, of course, Strange Beast and, you know, I, I, you know, I'll go back to my roots, right? Yes. Yes. Come on out. Absolutely. So thank you so much. And, and please be safe. And we will well. look forward to seeing you on the other side. And everyone go to Strange Beast and go to Lincoln's Beard. Absolutely. Best of luck and stay safe. We'll talk to you later, Beth. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.